We've got the glazing bars sorted out yesterday so we can sort these diminished shoulders and the bottom rail finish tenoning that. We've not cut the shoulders yet to this full depth but I wanted to make these joints set so I know exactly how wide this bit of the door is so I can set my shoulders to suit because uh, it was based on how much material I took off here to here as to how it affected these bottom rails. So, so one of the first jobs I'm going to do is sort the panel out because the panel's going to be glued in into this door. It's going in a groove, not a rebate. So it has to go in at the time of gluing the door together. I made it the other day, but I realised that I sort of went on autopilot and made the panel for this door at the same time as the panels for the bottom of here. I made them all the same thickness, so thin it down and re-glue it back together to the right size to suit this door. So that's my first job. I guess I can see how well this glue sticks. Good test today. Test the thinness down, I'm just pushing it around the circular saw. Gives me a reference edge to the rough thickness I'm going to end up at. And I can just remove the bulk of the material with a hand saw between them two reference edges. Then a pass under the belt sander gives me the final thickness again and I can glue it back together, so it wasn't too disastrous. Spread the weight. Right, with that little job done, let's work on the door. Let's put the tenons on the top and the middle rails. So I'm just going to cut them in accordance with the mortises, so the through tenon here and these lines here are what I need to cut out on the tenon. So whatever that is, I think it's 47 mil. I'm just gonna mark 46 mil. Just gonna give me one more wiggle room to help with assembly and disassembly. You don't want everything dead tight, it really makes it hard work. Before a machine needs, I forgot to take these haunches out. I normally do it in the square edge of timber. So just got a little 15 mil packer here and my trend flush trim and mill the ends of the, the chisel marks there from the mortise chisel to a really nice even height using that router bit. I did manage to do the same thing on these bottom rails despite the fact that haunch is 70 mil down in the tenon, but I'm gonna keep that secret because it was it's dodgy. Really dodgy. It's got that top rail in the vice now. So just make sure you work off the inside edge. It's 47 mil mortise, so it's gonna nip inside of that 29 and a half mil from the shoulder, from the rebate to the bottom of that haunch. So, and I always use a combi square for this job and it gives you your square for your tenon to cut down and then you can use the bottom to mark that haunch cut. We're removing this bit. Never ever use hands already, I have used it twice in one day. Crazy. piece of wood up so you cut this vertical and you'll follow the line a lot easier. Going for a really tight finish on the top of the door, just you can undercut that joint very slightly so you're definitely going to have a gap here and then this bit is nice and tight. You don't want to be positive at all because if you crush the wood fibres over the years they're going to expand back to what they were and push the joint apart. Let's just have a quick look at that one. Well from back here it looks right. A great success. Yeah I'll do. I'll do. Beautiful little joint. Plane these uh, rails up one mil thicker than they wanted to be so that's worked out about right. All right middle rail then. I can cut the tenons on this. It's going to fit in like that but because I've not grooved the bottom side I'm waiting for that panel to dry so that I can set this groove width and, and take this 15 mil out. I can't do this edge yet because that's going to be removed and go into that setback. So I can mark my tenons out exactly the same process. Centre tenon doesn't matter so much. You obviously have a better joint if it perfectly matches the 
counterpart joint, but if this line drops a little bit lower, as long as it's clear, so you're gonna guarantee that goes together and it, it, no one will ever know. But I try to get it pretty close so that the glue is, is doing something in the joint in that location. Just, just, just running out of room. All right, panel's dry. I'm just gonna calibrate it on the wide belt. Push it through it, it means I'm gonna have to paint it again, but at least I can set up from the groove then. There we go, that's within 0.1 of a mil now. It got one side perfectly flat and then flipped it over. It took about another 0.2 of a mil before it's got pretty much all of that panel flat as well. So it shows how much sort of gluing them two together can bow and distort a couple of perfectly flat sheets. Right, I can set up for that bottom rail tenon cutting now. It's going to be pushed up tight against this line here. This is our most important setting out line on the joint. So the rail is going to get pushed right up to that. I want a bit of wiggle room there to get the joint apart. And I've marked on here a tight pencil line. I always mark these in dead tight. And then I've marked a bit of wiggle room there. And I'll just slice that line down so that when that rail gets pushed up to this sort of inside section of the mortise, it also hits this one as well. So it all butts up tight to that position. So now that tenon in the middle rail can go into that joint. It's the right size. I can uh, sort out this bit of scribing down here. So get that in the vise. Called a gunstock style and a diminished shoulder. Right, so we need this moulding line here, which is going to be I've already cut that scribe on that joint. So if that went all the way through, that joint would go together. So I'm just gonna pencil that line in as though it's carrying on. But from this edge of my rail, the sight line of my rail, I know that that molding is eight millimeters. I'm just gonna mark that back over there. That's the springing point for this cut. And the other springing point is this one here. So no setback because it's just a groove into the solid piece of wood. So I'm cutting a diminished shoulder from over here down to this cross here. A knife edge like that provides a perfect pivot point. Gently for a start and get progressively deeper. Gentle for a start and then you don't move, the ruler doesn't get pushed around by the knife trying to follow the grain. Bit of an awkward one to film to be honest, but I'm gonna create a stop point on that corner with the saw, holding the rough angle of that bevel. Pray to the Lord himself that the grain is going to be nice to us, which it's not. We have to come at that from the front. Makes it a lot easier having that stop cut in there when the grain's dodgy because you're not fighting that end grain. easy at the top here because it's getting very thin.
no se su propia. You could just scrub that back to about here somewhere and just go down straight. But that's the, the counterpart of the joint that's in the tenon, so I'll just kept to that. Let's be chiseling that knife mark. Way down. Dead sharp tools for this. That's one side done. Do exactly the same on the other side. Slightly simpler on the rebate side because we've not got that bevel to deal with. So. A little identification which way the grain is running. Against us again, as always. We're looking for like a seamless rebate here. Don't want any or too many humps if we can help it. Into here. Not ready yet, but I'm just going to push that in. So, provided this rail is pushed in square into this piece of timber, which I can check, it's just a measurement off of this point here from the rebate up to here, off of here. That gives me my uh, shoulder line to cut onto this rail. Oh, it should be 45, yeah. Perfect. So let's just put a little score mark in here and we'll cheat. We'll use the crosscut saw then. Just a little light score line to ledge the chisel in. Aggressively deeper. Dead easy really this door because everything's got a round over and a V groove on it, so and it's painted. It's not like a stain grade or an oiled piece of joinery. Hey up, his nose is running. Rain's being quite nice, eh? Yeah. See how that little notch there is going to match the one we just cut? I just lodge me chisel in that score line. <laughs> Do the same on the other side. I shan't bore you with that one. This is where you realise that you've not gone to a setback or something. Properly messed up the angles. Just 
something's not quite right. Back, dead flat on this side. It's got a bit of a dip. Bit of adjustment required, I think, is the correct term out. Let's take a mill off to nothing out of that joint. This is why you want a bit of wiggle room, just to give you a chance to get these apart. There we go, it's in, and it's pretty good both sides, nice and square. Um, you have to be dead careful how much you take off this because we set them glazing bars and top rail to a set width. If we start peeling these shoulders back to get the fit of this joint right, we're going to make this uh, smaller in the door and cause problems there. Kind of got to err on the side of caution and then work your way up to sort of where you can get to as a finish mark, but that's pretty good. It just wants a slight undercut off that shoulder there, but it's, it is there, it's, it's beautiful. I've been trimming the shoulders a little bit, so I just want to check that it's all as it should be. I've got a machine that one as well. Got that on my list to do. It's always the bit closest to the camera that's wrong as well. There you go, there's my lovely wide door. You can take this measurement from here to that side now, and that is my shoulder measurement for this bottom rail. Look at the size of that tenant. <laughs> it's a beast. sneaky with these rails I've just tweaked the tenon to make it very slightly narrower tenon on these on these huge tenons so that pushing them together and taking them apart isn't impossible so give everything a, a light sand now even the rebates because these blazing beads for this one you just see a little bit of the rebate and I hate to see them look ripples from the molder I'm going to take the sharp edge off that top of that moulding as well so it creates a bit of a V groove at all the joint locations.
a bit like that. It looks beautiful. It just highlights everything. And also work a bit of a round over into them diminished shoulders. I'm gonna put the same round over on the glazing side, but I'm just gonna do this diminished shoulder by hand so that I don't, because I've chiseled that shoulder, I don't want the router bearing to follow these uh, divots and stuff and put the same divots in the top surface. So. Need to make the wedges for the tenons. So I keep hold of the pieces of wood you cut off from the tenons when we formed them and they produce the wedges that tap in the outside of the door. You can see here with this door, when it's uh, been pushed together, we can sort of see roughly our finished size of wedge that we want. And obviously we know how deep that wedge extends into the board because we've got the piece of wood that we've cut off. Hopefully you can see now um, why I set them out slightly different. So those wedges are fairly even on the outside of the door. I set them out slightly offset. So the top wedge here, look, is the same gap as the bottom one, but on my setting out, there's a smaller section of wood. And it's just allowing for that bit of gap you cut in the tenon for wiggle room to assemble and disassemble the joint. So that's how it ends up looking even at the end of the project. Otherwise you end up with a big wedge this side and a little one at the top. So I'll just make a little wedge jig. I've seemed to have lost my other one. Must have chopped it off some firewood. That is the length of my wedge. I want roughly 10 mil at this end of it. So somewhere there. And cut that out. Then use that little jig to cut my wedges. I don't know if you can see that on the on the camera, but the tip of the wedge is just touching as the base here touches, and that is the perfect wedge for that hole. See, that is perfect. What I like to have is the, the point of the wedge to have a bit of meat on it, and it touch first in the joint. And if I draw an explanation of why out on here, as you drive that wedge into the joint here, I like this part to be the strong part of the joint. So the tip of the wedge to be the part which is doing the, the locking. So that basically you end up denting or, or compressing the wood fibers within the center of the piece of wood. You're not compressing it at this back edge here, which you then subsequently plane away. You're compressing the middle of the joint. So make the, the tip of your wedge the part that does all the work. Then when you drive them in, from both sides, like so, you end up creating like a self-locking joint. So it, it takes this tenon and compresses the fibers here and here, and obviously glues it in place so that as this wedge is glued to that tenon, none of this can pull in this direction because you've created like an almost a dovetail joint at that location. The wedges will stick better to the tenon and remain glued to the tenon instead of the end grain of this door style. So you end up making this sort of dovetail joint that is compressed and very strong in the center of the piece of wood. So I always try to err on the side of creating the tip a bit thicker than this, this end, as long as when you drive it home, you can get it so that the gaps at the outside of the door go up tight. You don't want gaps in the wedges. You don't want to you know, a gap like that at the outside of the door, that's going to look terrible. It's got a seat up so that it looks tight, but it's inside the joint is where you want your strength. One last thing I'm going to do before I glue this together is put the mortise in for the lock in this style. 
So it's going to be a, a rim latch in this rail which sits on the inside of the door. So I'm not going to worry about that, but it needs a mortise deadlock. Because that rail is quite low on the frame, I'm going to put the lock above the latch. So the, la the lock is going to be in this location here. It's going to be really easy to mortise this in on the mortiser while I've got it out the door rather than having to drill it and stuff in a completed door. So I can do that beforehand. So the idea here is to have that lock so the key ends up in the middle of that opening. Somewhere there, just mark the lock on. Most deadlocks will need a 16mm housing for them, so that's what Chisel I've put in. I'm going to end this video here actually. I'm not 100% with it today. I've probably not stitched this filming together well at all. I mean, making a door should be a really good video, and I bet it's uh, not been that great, but uh, I'm feeling about 30% of my normal self. But we're here and we've achieved, so perfect. Yeah, I just pushed it together and uh, I'll make a separate video out of gluing this door up because I've got a bit of a plan. I'm going to use PU glue, even though it's a half an hour PU glue. There isn't time to glue something like this up. In a coir, maybe, because it's incredibly dry. As soon as you use it on something like a hardwood or a, or a softwood, um, they tend to like set the glue twice as fast as it does with a coir. So I'd attempt this if it was an a coir door, but being hardwood, there's no way I'm going to put PU glue on all of this. Get it clamped up, get everything in the right place, get it wedged before that glue has gone off. So I've got a bit of a plan for that. So it's going to be the next video. But yeah, it's looking really cool. What a cool door. You can see I've just made a, a V groove out of these shoulder lines. It's going to help both. This is the outside of the door. So it's going to help with the joint integrity because I can see all that V groove with that uh, V groove sealant and it helps stop the weather getting into it. But it also just highlights the fact that them diminished shoulders are there and you, you sort of pick them out with your eye and you notice all that it's like a little bit different and it enhances the fact that this bit of style is much thicker than this one up here and it does look really nice actually. I've got this just stupidly wide tenon down here a bit more elegant at the top with the dainty little glazing bars and these when they're all painted up will look like you've puttied the glass in so um, yeah, the, the bevel is meant to look like a putty line on your glass. Normally go home and spend all evening video editing, but I think uh, just go and lay on the sofa with a hot chocolate tonight. So see you in the morning. <laughs>